Revolting. Covering She's So Lovely. Enjoy the episode. Yeah. All Hello, right. Jeff. Hi, Stuart. So, right off the bat, um, um, have you seen the poster for this movie? No. Okay, so I'm going to show you the poster for this movie. And the audience is invited to... Look. I know I'm starting, like, literally right off the bat. But Yeah, you are. I was um, going to say, you look very lovely today. Thank you. Uh, nice shirt some on. Some could say that I'm so lovely. But I'm going to show you the poster for this movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that I have seen. So, you look at this poster. Right. Take a good look at it. Okay. I was... I have been convinced since we started the show that this was a rom-com. I have spent... 26 episodes building up to this being a rom-com. Wait, were you, like, have you seen this movie before? I've not. And But I, you were aware of its presence. I was aware it was a movie that we were covering. Um, and and you, I looked at that poster, and I'm like, oh, it's a rom-com. And that had been taken a piece of your that attention. Had, yes, that had been stuck in my brain. Because, like, when we first started the show, I went through every movie we're covering and, like, looked at the posters and put them in a list for us. Okay, yeah. I'm like, well, rom-com. Didn't look anything else into it. I straight up told Becca this morning, hey, I'm watching uh, Michael and then this rom-com. And cut to three months later after we start the podcast yes. and you actually watch it today. I start this movie. Yeah. Like, first, it's like Robin like, like laying in a ditch, taking shots of whiskey, smoking a cigarette, being like assaulted by James Gandolfini. Uh, and I was like, oh, this is not a rom-com. Not a rom-com. And I was like, hmm, who directed this? And I saw Nick Cassavetes. The same director of? Uh, the Notebook. I guess The Notebook. What, which is a very much a rom-com. Yes, which is very much a romantic movie. But, but, as many of our film fans may know, Nick Cassavetes is the son, son of John, John Cassavetes. Cassavetes. Yeah, launch it right into the context corner here, folks. <laughs> he, he wrote this film in yes. the 80s. Yes, and he passed away before he could make it. 86? Was Somewhere, he died, he died, I think he died 88. 88. Let me confirm that. Yeah, he died 89. And February. Sean Penn was attached for a while. Sean Penn was attached to the original John Cassavetes version. He God. dropped out during the cast John Cassavetes version. Over 10 years you're talking about this And movie. then John Cassavetes kind of put it on the back burner. He never got around to making it before he passed away. Right. 10 years, 8 years later, his son, Nick, decides to honor his dad. He's, you know, started getting traction as a director. And he's going to make John Cassavetes' She's so last old. movie, right. for lack of a better term. It's like that uh, the Orson Welles movie that never got released. They decided to make his last movie. Or it's like um, AI. AI, yeah. With, with Kubrick. Stan Kubrick and Spielberg. Yeah, and then everyone's like, the ending is so Spielberg. And it's like, Kubrick wrote that ending. But anyway. Thank uh, you. Thank you. I was about to say the same yeah, thing. AI is an amazing movie. It is. A, um, it, it, it's, it's pretty good. AI makes me want to weep. Uh, maybe the saddest movie ever. Yeah. But this is also an extremely sad movie. Yeah. Um, I found this deeply sad, <laughs> deeply depressing, well, which going in expecting a rom-com, I was a bit thrown off. You know, sad is a pretty useful adjective to use. I would probably be go by the phrase of fucked up. Yes. This is a fucked up movie. Yes. This is a very fucked up movie. Yeah. Which, you know, it's very in line with Cassavetes. Yes. He, you know, pioneer of a lot of, you know, independent cinema ideas in the 70s and then into the 80s. Yeah. Um, this kind of like focusing on people who don't necessarily get focused on in films and displaying them as they really kind of are, for lack of a better term, like just showing things that actually happen without trying to adhere it to like a Hollywood structure or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and it's a love, it's, I wouldn't say it's a lovely result, <laughs> it's but it's not a lovely result. Um, cause Nick Cassavetes I would say... His father, he is not. His Yes. His father, he is not. This movie... Is, well, and it is given the 90s treatment. Yes. Very much the 90s treatment. Mm -hmm. this, this movie needed John Cassavetes to tie it all together. And it needed to come out in the 80s. Yeah. And it needed to come... I, I think it could have worked in the 90s had John directed it. Uh, I don't know. How old was he in the 90s? How old would he have been if he had done this in 97? Uh, John Cassavetes, he was 59 when he died. So he would have been in the 60s. Not terribly old, but I feel yeah. like the culture of Hollywood had changed so much by this time that yes. it's going to get the treatment one way or the other. Mm -hmm. I mean, right? I mean, like, the 
his movies were always filmed for such micro budgets or small budgets that it never wasn't ever really a huge issue. Yeah. Um, he kind of worked outside the system. Uh, this movie has a very big budget. Right. It has $18 million. Yeah. Which is, I think, one of... And I want to emphasize, I do like this movie. I actually like really? this movie. Really? I actually like this movie. Okay. I didn't love it. This is a 7 out of 10 for me. I, I, would, I would say I'm in the same boat. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. Yeah. I would put it at a 6 out of 10. Yes. Um, whereas there are some bits and pieces where I'm like, okay, that's mm-hmm. that's interesting. You can see the movie this is trying to be. Yeah. And the performances yes, are can. universally very strong in this. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, but it whether it's because different director, different time, whatever it is, it doesn't cross the finish line, but it still does better than some of the other competitors could have, is my strained yeah. analogy for it yeah i i think we're on the same wavelength with this movie for the mm-hmm. most part that but before we get too deep into the movie i'm gonna wheel it back to the context corner yeah so we've gone into how this movie kind of came around it's john cassavet's script his son makes it many years later um sean penn comes back to the movie yeah um i cannot find too much in the way of the making of this movie but i would assume kind of as a way to honor john cassavet's original choice yeah. Sean Penn comes in uh robin wright um at this point Robin, Robin Wright, Wright Penn, Penn. Uh, comes into play his wife. They have a natural chemistry, which I think really does sing in the movie. Yeah. Um, and then Travolta plays the third, who on the poster, the reason I thought this was wrong, he's like smiling in the side like, yeah, it's me. Um, you think it's going to be like, oh, it's like a little two guys are in love with the same girl type yeah, of movie. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like two guys in love with the same girl. And the friendly and, competition and it, manly it, men. Essentially, it is that. <laughs> But, but, it but is not that, friendly competition. But a lot more violent. Yes. A lot more aggressive. Um, this is like... A, hostile. This is essentially a, what I imagine a rom-com directed by John Cassavetes would be like. Yes. Um, so in that sense, I was kind of into that concept. Like, mm-hmm. what if we just made a scumbum rom-com? Like, what would that be? Um, like this. Yes. Well, I think... But, uh, uh, well, I think it was Nick Cassavetes who made a comment where it was the... You know, oftentimes um, we think of the uh, the city life of the impoverished to be the most dramatic, but oftentimes it's the high life suburbia where yeah. we see the most crazy out, out yeah. events, and that's what this movie's trying to do. Yeah, this movie's trying to draw a correlation to that. No matter where you are, there's going to be crazy. Yeah, um, and sometimes the thing that seems simpler is um, worse than the thing that you th- that you're afraid of. Right. Yeah. Um. The, if, there's a lot of like ideas in that general vein in this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Travolta, at this period, has just come off of you know Michael. He's he's in the string of hits. Yeah. This is more or less, and we'll talk about this. This at is the a end. critical hit. This is this gets good reviews, but at, um, but it is a box office failure. It's actually his first box office failure, if we discount White Man's Burden, uh, which we do. Yeah. Uh, Post Pulp Fiction. I don't think this necessarily hurts him, but it also doesn't help. Because Get Shorty and I'm just thinking about the ones that were dual critical hits and box office hits. Because yes. again, we we're, this is last week we talked about um, Michael, which yeah. was the opposite box office hit, not a critical hit. Yeah, uh, we talk about um, the week before that with Phenomenon, mm-hmm. um, kind of a lukewarm critic critical hit. And then a decent but, box and office. And a lukewarm box office hit. Mm-hmm. Like, this okay on both fronts. Yeah. Uh, week before that, Broken Arrow. A same luke, lukewarm critical hit, but big um, box office hit. Yeah. And Get Shorty, which is a great critical hit. And box office box hit. Box office hit. Pulp We're Fiction, not... obviously, both makes yeah. an insane amount of money. So, for the most part, like, he's never had it to where it's been very lopsided critically. Yeah. Like, great box office failure. He, We've had he critical failures, but box office hits. His star hasn't been scuffed yet. Exactly. And I think his, perform- his, so- his performance in this is good, and his, like position in it is almost tertiary to the point that it doesn't impact him one way or the other right and but on the same note i just thought of like a sort of a topic that we might have on this episode in particular because it goes back to a film like blowout yeah and the concept of a movie that is because i won't say she's so lovely is ahead of its time yeah it's it's not like Mm. it's 
it it's of its time. It's of its time in the um, in the sense of the '80s when it was originally meant to come out. Yeah, and you know, I think the John Cassavetes um, screenplay, um, no very clear spine a plot. Rather, yeah. it's just in. Um, it's more of a uh, demonstration that you're witnessing yeah. more so. And I think that's kind of run its course throughout once we're in yeah. the 90s where we're in the, the blockbuster explosive. And um, then the indie boom of the 90s is the different than the indie boom of like exactly. the 70s. Exactly. Yeah. People are have an expectation for an yeah. indies um, in the 90s. And I just, I think the Cassavetes. Um, Style. Kind of, I, don't, I think people didn't know what to make of this. Exactly. Movie. Exactly. Now, with that being said, um, let's dilute this topic down to even a more simpler concept, which is like when you have a movie that critically is good, but is a box yeah. office failure, does it deserve the scuff mark on an actor's um, track record as it does? So we deserved. I don't think so. If it gets like critic, if it's a good movie and it doesn't make money, right? Like I don't, um, for, I'm trying to think of a, a recent like mega flop. That was actually a very good movie. Hmm. Um, poor, I'm trying like, Blade Runner 2049 did not make a lot of money. Did not do very well. Did um, it make back its budget or um it made like it made like its budget for like a, it was like a 200 million dollar movie and it made more or less that. Let me get the exact amount made. Yeah. But it's basically that I mean that's a very crazy example. But it's a it's a movie that has come out recently everyone who saw it loved it didn't make money. And I don't think that necessarily hurt anyone involved. No, I, I, I mean Denny's making Dune. Yeah, <laughs> Ryan Gosling's still working. Harrison Ford's still working. he's making Indiana Jones five right now. Yeah, insane, which is insane. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, it, it it is a tough concept to yeah. even think about in modern perspective because we we don't live in an the age, outlets, We don't necessarily live in an age of movie stars. The anymore. platforms and outlets are are totally yeah. totally different. When Con- something's not good financially, there's always Netflix. Yeah. And then there're different numbers that you judge it on. And I hate the sentence I'm about to say, but like content and IP are the stars now. Yeah. Move, there's only a few there's aren't as many movie stars nowadays as there were back in the day. There's right. more actors, but there are less movie stars. Yeah. Um and this is a star like passion vehicle, and I think that they're willing to like. I don't think anyone holds those movies down unless they're like aggressively bad when they come. Yeah, out. right. But when it comes to Travolta in this movie, uh, he's playing a very like supporting role. Mm-hmm. I get the impression this is more or less a favor on his end because mm. uh, this movie is it's a Miramax film produced mm. by ha- Harvey and Bob Weinstein, mm-hmm. uh, the most reputable guys in Hollywood. Yeah. Total nice guys. Um, one of them who's definitely not in jail right now. Um, the other one probably should be. <laughs> um, but, um, and I get the impression that he was kind of put. He they start they restarted his career with uh, Pulp Fiction. Yeah, I get the impression because I don't see him at this point in his career with like the mega star that he is taking on a taking role like a that. role like this. Yeah, I get the impression that they were kind of just like, hey. We scratch your back, you scratch ours. But Pop up in this movie. It's, only, it's like three weeks of work. I don't know if you agree with this, though, but this felt like a perfect shoe size fit for John. Yes, the, he is a perfect fit for this role, and I'm glad he agreed to it. Yeah, like, just, it reminded me of Interstellar with Matt mm-hmm. Damon. But, like, every other movie he's in during this time period, he is number one star. His yeah. face is the poster, except for this one. This he's is, on the poster. Is, he oh. is on the poster, but but he doesn't show up until like halfway through yeah, the movie. But he's third build. He's the and. Yeah. It, no, it's and John Travolta as Joey. Like wow. e- even if he is support, even if he's like he's taken the supporting role for the first time in a while, he's getting the full supporting. With, he's getting the Sam Jackson treatment. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is interesting. But uh, we talked about this before, where that was sort of the. The downfall mm-hmm. for him twice where he yeah. got it stuck in his head that he's only the leading man yeah. a list and he just ignored this is like you know if because i i read it well now as you say it i i can see that where this yeah. was a favor to be done but i wish it wasn't i mm-hmm. wish this was something that he knew was well, a calculated smart move because he, these are the roles he honestly needs to take once in a while and, at, and even as i say that 
he did also exec he was an executive producer listed on this movie. Okay. So I I get the impression that in addition to like hey John I feel like he was also like this is literally the last opportunities I'm going to ever going to get to work in a Cassavetes movie. Cuz even though it's like only half a Cassavetes movie. Yeah. Um so he's kind of like all right, I'll I'll take the hit and I'll do this one. Right. And he's like I'll slap my name on as a producer. This movie's also produced by Sean Penn. Mm-hmm. I think like, and then Gerard Depardieu is an executive producer. I don't know who that um, is. He's a French actor. <clears throat> um, he's a obelisk, I think his name is. Uh, he used to be like a, like the ultimate like good looking guy in France. And then I'll show you a picture of what he looks like now. <laughs> Not good looking. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> oh God! Um, what was his name again for our audience? Gerard look- Depardieu. Um, and then, oh, he, he was, I, I take it back. He was never like the ultimate good looking guy, but he was like a bigger star. Uh, and then he turned into a bigger star. <laughs> 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 you had to do it. I had to do you it. You had to do it. Um, oh, Jesus. But I, I don't know what his involvement in this movie is about. Uh, I guess he was just like, yeah, I'll throw, I'll throw some money at that or whatever. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, any more context to this? Really, that, that's I mean, basically the extent of the context. Um, it comes out in 1997, um, Miramax release. It comes out in August, though, so I think they kind of knew they weren't gonna ha- make this an Oscar play because mm-hmm. August is the dumping grounds. Yeah. Um, I, I guess they were just like, oh, we'll just put it there. Um, but yeah, I guess we can just dive more or less right into the movie. Sick. Because we uh, start with some accents. That's the first thing I wrote down. Well, we start with a quote about love. Yes. I don't remember what the quote was, though. I don't either. I should have written it down. But uh, We're such great critics. <laughs> it opens uh, up with a quote about love. Yes. It kind of leads you into... We start with a, a helicopter shot of some, like, city. Yeah. I don't know where. I think it's New York. It. Ha- I don't think it's New York City. Because you would see New York City. Because you can see too many trees and whatnot. Hmm. It looks. I, it definitely looks like New York or New Jersey, and it sounds. Like, it, it sounds like it. <laughs> Could be Boston. Oh no, they're talking in like the New York Jersey accent. They're not talking the Boston accent. They're not talking like. They're not talking like JFK. They're all like, "Hey, how you doing? Why you? What's wrong? What the fuck's wrong with you?" You know. That's not Boston. No, that's that's like Jersey, New York. It's like Joe Pesci, Robin Wright in this movie. Hmm. Um. Okay. Yeah, we more or less start right off with um, Robin Wright, and she emerges from an apartment room and goes up to a phone and is, like, dialing. She can't find her husband, husband, Eddie. Eddie, played by Sean Penn. Played by Sean Penn, um, who, real-life husband at the time. Yeah. Um, And at the same time, uh, James Gandolfini, uh, he of Get Shorty fame, um, emerges from the same room and is like, hey, baby, come back in here. Uh, (laughs) While her husband's away, uh, uh, while her husband's away, James is trying to play, um, and he's like, "Here, take a drink." And she's like, "I'm pregnant. I don't drink. I don't smoke." And meanwhile, she's smoking a cigarette, which is funny. Yeah, um, they do that a few times. Yeah, in this movie. she's she's literally like chain smoking, like chain drinking shots in this movie. Yeah, um, that baby, while she's pregnant, that baby should have fetal alcohol yeah. syndrome, but but um, whatever. She eventually just, like, is desperate to find her husband. So she leaves the apartment, uh, and she's looking for... She goes to a bar, and there's Harry Dean Stanton in it, and a bunch of other people she knows. I'm so glad Harry Dean Stanton's in this movie. What a, what a reassuring presence in a movie. Yeah. I, it's like you always see him, and you feel like everything's going to be okay. Yeah. I'm so. Have you ever watched his deleted scene from The Avengers? No. So he pops up for that cameo, which I always thought was very strange. When the hole crashes yeah, down. Like, yeah. That's a very odd choice because all he does is just like, son, you have a condition. Yeah. Son, you have a condition. And it, it's funny. Yeah. Um, but I was like, why did they put him there? And then there's a deleted scene where he kind of gives the Hulk a pep talk right afterward. And you're like, that's what you put Harry Dean Stan in your movie for. And they deleted that. They deleted that. Um, God, fuck you. You, you put him in to, to put this like, he's a steady hand. Whatever you need him to do, he's just going to come in, get in, get out, and do it. Am I batshit crazy that he was in that David Lynch tractor movie? Uh, he, Yes, he plays... He um, plays the brother that he's, he's brother, going yeah. out for. A great role. He's great in that. It's only like one scene at the end, What's but he's great in it. Called? The Straight Story. The Straight Story. Great movie. Great movie, by the way. 
Yeah. I'm glad you showed it to me. I yeah. credit you for showing that one to me. I love the straight story. Um, it is uh, Harry Dean Stanton. Yes. He's a lovely actor. He's in Twin Peaks. Um, he pops up in... Yes, 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 yes. yes. I actually saw one of his, if not his last movie, um, in theaters a few years ago. It's called Lucky. Uh, he's like 93 in it. He's fantastic. David Lynch also acts in the movie. <laughs> it's a very good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you see, he's just a, a steady hand. I'm glad he's in this movie. And I'm glad he's in this scene where she's in the bar. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she's in the bar and she's like, I'm looking for Eddie. I'm looking for Eddie. And they're all like, he's like, you know, you know she goes away. He goes away you sometimes. You married a grifter. He'll, yeah, you married a grifter. He'll come back. And I wrote, like, this is extremely scuzz core movie. Like, this is just like a scum bum, like, movie about, like, these, uh, like, low status, like, people who just, like, live their lives in, like, a blue collar environment. Yeah. In, like, downtown some city. Right. Because we never see what city. Um, and in the bar is James Gandolfini. His yes. character name is Kiefer. He's back. Uh, is he the landlord of the building, or am I crazy thinking that? I think he just lives there. Okay. There, I thought there They never said he was, like, the building manager or anything, but I felt vibes of, like, he ran the building yeah. or something. But maybe I, I, I think just, he just lives there. He just has, like, a commanding presence. Yes. Like, you see him, and he's like, he's the boss of something or someone, yes. you know? That's why I love his role in Get Shorty so much, <laughs> is because he is the henchman. Yeah. But you see him, and because of his Tony Soprano role, you just I, think right. of him. Can we just shout out him and get Shorty being a stuntman as a henchman? And it's funny because he's so inept at his shout out because he's only ever good at missing punches as a stuntman. We, we said this on Get Shorty, I just wanted right? to shout that out again because it's so funny. funny. It is pretty funny. <laughs> uh, great, great role for him. Great role for James Gandolfini. Um, but yeah, so she starts drinking with Kiefer. Yeah. Um, um, her name in this is... Uh, Marine. Marine. Uh, she also goes by Mo. My grandma's name is Marie. Or Murphy. Or Murph. Yeah. Uh, she goes by a few names. Yeah. I just know her as Marine because mm-hmm. my grandma's name is Marine. Oh, shout out to you, Grandma. That's sweet. She shout, less... shout out Grandma Elmore. Gra- or is it Ness. Grandma? Grandma yeah. Ness. But my ma- mom's maiden name is Ness. Gotcha. You can probably hack into my bank account now. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the um, security questions. <laughs> already at this point in the movie, I'm like Robin Wright is giving a performance. She'll, she's she, has she ever been? Has she ever had like a a, a tiptoe movie where she hasn't been good but yet becomes good? Because I always thought of her as good from the get go. No, she's always she's always given a performance. Yeah, right. Um, another steady hand, but just like a really reliable actress. Yeah. Print, from yeah. the Princess Bride onward, she's always been good. Yeah, and 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 this, I really like the role that she's doing because I I don't think I've seen her take a role s- similar to this in a hot minute. Yes, um, very much not a Robin Wright role. Yes, it's also a, a commanding presence actor. This is, in a sense, um, I thought about this. She's kind of playing, um, Jenny in the midpoint of Forrest Gump, <laughs> except like. <laughs> Except like ten yeah. times worse. Like yes, I agree. Whereas Jet, whereas Forrest Gump is a movie that admonishes her for being a person with free will. This movie is empathizing with her. Yeah, Forrest Gump's a movie where it's like, <laughs> look at Jenny. She's so stupid. She's so mean because yeah. she doesn't want to be with. She Forrest. doesn't want to be with her guy. And it's like she just wants to. Yeah, she wants to live her life and get away from her abusive childhood. <laughs> right. You yeah. keep forcing her back to it. Yeah, and we're judging her for um, it. Fucking uh, pricks. Yeah. But in this movie, she's uh, we're celebrating her freedom. Yeah, we're, freedom. we're celebrating that, or not celebrating, but we're empathizing with that. Yeah. Um, but she's like, you know, very stressed. Can't find her she's husband. She's drinking more with Kiefer, and they get drunk, and then and go they, back to her apartment or his and apartment. And they, he uh, bring drags her kind of into his apartment. They drink some more. Yeah. There's like a weird little montage. He gives her some coke. Oh, they do coke. Yeah, they do do coke. Oh, I didn't. At one point, it's very. Coke. I don't think. I don't think you actually see the coke, but she's like sniffing on the table. Yeah. Um, but they do some coke, and then he attempts to rape her. I don't know if he succeeds. Well, like he assaults her. He punches um, her and beats her up. But we don't actually get like cause she gets knocked out in his apartment, yeah. and then it cuts away, so it doesn't yeah. actually like confirm anything yeah. that happened other than the assault itself. Yeah. Um. And so she's all beaten up, and um, the next thing she's driving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the audience, Jeff just showed me a note in his notebook. Uh, I was expecting a rock, <laughs> and we get oh. like a, a sexual assault scene. Yes. Uh, yeah, 
I mean, it's, it is pretty brutal. But she, she goes back to her apartment, and the next day she goes to um, the bar again. She slips. Um, and she walks in, and who's there? Her husband, Eddie. Did we miss before that she went to, like, a psychiatric facility? Um, oh, yes. She goes to a psychiatric facility. And she talks to, like, a social worker or somebody. She's, like, about her husband. She's, like... Um, and they're like, did he hit you? And she's like, like no, 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 he would never. Yeah. And the social worker doesn't believe her. Right. They think it's an abuse thing. But she, yeah. her case she's is, like, is that if I tell, if he looks at me and he thinks somebody did this to me, he's going to want to kill him. And I want you guys to know. Yeah. It's like to a, stop the murder. It's, it's a bit weird yeah. for her character, in my opinion, that she mm. would be like this free spirited, um, sort of um not very high on the totem pole status person i think and she, yet she very much doesn't want to be in that position um i think she's trying to like she doesn't want to be there but she's just addicted to it right but even like later in the movie when she's in the other side of it yeah she doesn't seem to have a besides her fucking hair gets yeah. burnett and long her character's mm-hmm. not really that different yeah i think it's very much that as much as she like wants to not be in that world, she's so ad- like she's addicted to it, just as she's addicted to the drugs and the cigarettes and the the alcohol and whatnot. Yeah, and so I just felt it kind of weird that she went through the yeah. trouble of like going to a psychiatric facility to warn them of a potential murder her husband yeah. might commit for her getting beat up. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So then after she that, doesn't want him to get hurt. Right. So then she goes to a bar and she's like been and her car broke down. So she's been like walking around in the rain. Yeah. She's cold and she wet. She slips at one point. She slips. And so she's just getting the treatment in the beginning yeah. of this movie. She gets the treatment the entire film. Yes. Just like abused. Abused by and, everything. By the movie. By the movie, really. Yeah. And so she does go to the bar and then Eddie's we, there. Eddie's there. Sean and ben. we we get like the most Cassavetes like dialogue scene ever where they're like across the bar from each other yeah and it's like they're married yeah they're a married couple and yet they're it's like they're meeting each other and seeing each other like they're distant friends and like oh hey eddie and it's like oh hey and he's he's like with other people and first second i was like wait is champagne not playing her husband that's right that's what my thought was too like i'm like this is this is and then they say eddie and i'm like oh okay he is yeah and so and then there was there was the whole like like the reason why I say like, you know, the Cassavetes dialogue, because something that from other different uh, screenwriters in the same way is like the unnecessary ums and what's and yeah. what'd you say and like repeating yourself and things yeah. like uh, get her a drink. And it's like, hey, I don't really want a drink. It's like, well, what kind of drink do you want? And it's like, what? And it's like, yeah. I said, what kind of drink do you want? It's like, oh, well, if I had and it's like yeah. all these like the passive like dialogue. And it's like, yeah. just go to the bar. <laughs> For a modern <laughs> like, example, it's very much like uncut gems in that way. Yes. Um, yes. Which is very much indebted to the Cassavetes f- films. Yeah, very much so. And so once she gets closer to him, he sees her bruised face and she yeah. immediately passes off as I slept and fell. Yeah. Um, and he buys that. Yeah. And he, he's like, we got to get this girl some alcohol. Yeah. Uh, gives her a drink and then takes her to the emergency room. Knowing that she's pregnant, too. Knowing that she's pregnant. Uh, goes to the emergency room. The, the baby's fine. Yeah, and the doctor does tries to do another test, and Sean Penn like sees his hand is mildly near her. He, he has to like press on her abdomen to make sure yeah. like there's no like sore soaring and, or anything. And Eddie gets jealous. Yeah, and like, he goes in. He's like, "All right, she's fine. The right. baby's fine. We're out." Yeah. So it pretends to like Eddie's hostility yeah. towards yeah. any treatment towards Rob, you know, yeah. his wife. Um. So, I'm just looking at my notes here. Baby's fine. They go out. Yeah. He wants to take her out. Then I'm going to go dancing. Yes. With some friends. He doesn't bring any money. So, he, he is, he's like, I'll write an IOU. And the girl buys it. She He charms her into the IOU. Yeah. I mean, he gets even a couple extra bucks yeah. out of it, too. He's like, don't push it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, It's like... One thing that I I picked up on, you know, Sean Penn's character in this is like this is a guy who like poorly sweet talks himself yeah. through shit. Like the haircut scene. Mhm. Like he didn't pay for that. Yeah. And he's not good, but he somehow still succeeds. He at it. walks out of 
Travolta's house, spoiler alert, with his wife and like, yeah, there is some tension and conflict, <laughs> but he still does it, you yeah. know? Like this guy just seems like he gets his way. Yeah. But there's no way he gets his way through his intellect yeah you know what i mean like yeah. there's just something it's like the he's relentless and passionate it's like domino and deadpool it's like the yeah. good luck thing yeah like the dude just like flails around and just misses whatever's yeah. trying to hit him hit his way mm. it's the only when he gets you know the the whole uh the him jumping out of the yeah. bar window and getting chased that's when like the shit hits the fan yeah but everything else, it's like he's just like lumping his way through life and yeah. casually, luckily, missing everything that's hitting him. And he's. It's never said what mental disorder he has, but it's established he has a very serious mental disorder right. that causes him to disappear for days at a time and then come back. Yeah. Um, right. That they're all aware of. Yeah. That everybody's aware of. And they go out dancing. Yeah. Um, and they have a very lovely time. And, it's, and she wears her nice red dress and they dance. It's very cute. Very yeah. sweet. They go back to their apartment. And he is like you someone did this to you well so they go to the apartment okay. and then they pass uh Kiefer's door james yeah. Gennafini's door oh, and she starts banging and on she him. starts banging on and getting upset and he's like are you gonna beat him up and he's like i don't why do i want to beat him up yeah he opens the door takes a swing at <laughs> robin wright and then eddie immediately goes to town on him and then he turns around to say something to marine and then Kiefer gets a shot off of him, knocks him out. Mm -hmm. It's a very confusing sequence yeah. of who has the upper hand, where, when, and where. Yeah. You don't know if Kiefer, you don't know if if Kiefer's the big hotshot guy who could beat up any dude, or you don't know if Eddie's the big hotshot guy yeah. who could beat up any dude, because both guys get their ass kicked by each other. So it's yeah. kind of like a weird, like who's the person with power in this situation? Mm -hmm. Nobody is. Yeah, which it's is just chaos happening. Yeah, it's all chaos. So um, after that scene. Um, that's when he finds out, like, oh, somebody did do this to yeah. you. And he's like, I need to know the truth. I can't be getting these fables and foibles. And Yeah. So he is... He starts losing it at this point. Yeah, he starts getting enraged, and he's armed at this point. Yeah. And that's when I write down Marine calls the white coats. Yes. He also, at one point, is just like, when he gets into a mood, he starts, like, digressing and starts like rambling with things. Disassociating, yeah. And disassociating. At one point, he's just like, he starts rambling about what is hair. And he's like, tits and ass, I understand, but hair, nails, I don't get what, like, what is it? How, why does it keep happening? Why is it growing? Mm -hmm. um, th this, I found his performance really sad. Me too. Like, around this part, I'm like, as, like, scary as this guy is for the situation, um, he just, like, he's a deeply sad person who's, like, struggling with a horrible illness. Yeah, right. Mm. And so he's at a bar, and he's drinking. Well, first he tries, to, he shoots in James Gandolfini's door. Yes. Um, and he's not home. So he goes to a bar to try and find him. And he just starts drinking. He starts, starts drinking and rambling on about math. And yeah. he's like, two plus two equals four. And he's like, our entire... Um, our entire uh, reality is a simulation. We're all yeah. ones and zeros. He says, we're all controlled by a computer and seven women. Yeah. Says, that's what he says. Our entire world is controlled by a computer and seven women. Each one has different colored hair. And he lists, like, one's blonde, one's brunette, one's red hair, blue hair, and he lists it all out because he's slowly losing his mind. Yeah. Uh, and at one point, he asked Robin, right, like, are you clairvoyant? Can you read my thoughts? Can you read other people's thoughts? Do you know what's going to happen? I think you do. In which case, be honest with you, because you already know what's going to happen. He goes to the bar, and he asks for a Siberian mist. Uh, it's like a drink. Which is, like, three, four different alcohols. Mixed together. <laughs> mixed together. Um, I wonder if it's a real drink. I, it What's it called? It Siberian Mist. I'm going to look it up. Mist? Yeah, let's look it up and see what it is. I might try to order it in the next bar I go to. And they'll be like, what the fuck are you what talking about? You know, I went to a bar like... Siberian Blue Mist. Blue Mist? What's in it? Yeah. Champagne, gin, gin, lime, scotch, Sprite, tequila, white rum, rind, white, vodka, scotch. <laughs> Wait, what? That sounds pretty good, though. This is a listing like 30 things. I looked up Siberian's first result is a YouTube video. It says, she's so lovely. Fuck is a Siberian mist. Okay, so it's a, it's literally just a combination of like 30 different alcohols. Yeah. With Sprite. You just put champagne, gin, lime, scotch, Sprite, tequila, white rum, wine, white, and vodka. I thought I heard vermouth there in the movie. Pro it's probably just something you throw a lot of drinks. <laughs> a lot yeah, of alcohol right. Yeah, right. Um, so he's drinking at the bar. She calls uh, the White Coats, and they're yes. on their way to get him. 
and they find him at the bar. Yes. And that's when he fires off a shot. He shoots one of them. He shoots one of them. In the chest. Um, and then them. he yells, I'm a computer, and runs out the You're window. You're all ones and zeros. And he jumps out the window. Jumps out the window, shatters the glass. And just starts running down the street. And this yeah. is a very sad sequence. It's, I, it's well done where he's running down the street and like you're just getting... Like exposure, double exposure images of like them dancing thrown up. Yeah. It was like their happy moment, their like worst moment. Yeah. She's right. chasing after him, yelling like, Eddie, Eddie, whatnot. Like right. Screaming. The chaotic um, nature. Yeah. He sits down on a bus uh, bench, takes his pants off. Uh, an old woman runs away from him. Yeah. Like he's, he's very much lost it at this point. Like he's not really in face in reality anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cop cars show up that's where the sadness kind of hit me too because yeah. it just it painted a very familiar picture yeah that we're of all... someone with mental illness who never got the help they needed right and it's just locked up for it. yeah and <coughs> yeah so um they're all pointing their guns at him and uh marine comes screaming in he yeah. gets arrested and tied up in a he he's strapped um, yeah. Uh, what uh, straight jacket? Yeah, it looks tremendously sad. Yeah. Um, and Robin Wright goes to see. His... They get like five minutes with each other, and she says, "You'll be out in three months. Yeah, I'll be here waiting for you." And then the psychiatrist tells her, "Like, prognosis not good. It's yeah. gonna be longer than three months." Cut to ten years later. Who's the first person we see? John Travolta. John. Travolta. I mean, this is second only to like Avengers Endgame. <laughs> it's most shocking like title and, card appearance. And, and by the way. This cut to John Travolta, midpoint of the movie. Yes. Ten years like, later. I was I, I watched this and Michael back to back. Yeah. How long is Michael? An hour 45. This is an hour and a half. Yeah. The f- extra 15 minutes felt like an extra 45 in Michael. <laughs> when I reached the 45 it's all minute. Pacing. When I reached the 45 minute mark in this movie, I was like, holy fuck, we're already halfway through this? Like, yeah. what else do we have to do? Yeah. Um, but that's almost a whole other movie for the second half. It is a it is a whole separate movie. Yeah, it's a different movie. But like, and that movie goes by quick too. Yeah, this movie is fast paced. Yes, and yet it doesn't have a clear a plot. Yeah, like it's a, it is like we said. There's just no a, plot. It's just watching people in a, a situation. It's a demonstrated like, uh, what would I say before? Dem- it, it's watching messy people in a situation. Yeah, you're just watching a situation unfloral unfl- and, mm. but it's done in a way that it feels quick. Yeah. Even though there's nothing like continuously overarchingly happening. Mm. It's interesting. So I, I just want to point out how big Travolta looks in this movie. And I don't mean like, yeah, I don't mean like fat. I mean like big, big, they shoot him to look big and frightening in this movie. Like yeah. he looks like stocky. Like he looks stocky. I think he's it, wearing black. I'm almost like, is he stand? Is he have like height enhancers? Like he's a tall guy. Don't get me wrong. And he's always wearing like suit jackets. So like mm. his shoulders are more pronounced. Yeah. And I feel like he's definitely got a, a stockier yeah. nature. He and looks like, like a football dad. He does. But he, he just looks like a big frightening. He's always wearing dad. darker color clothes, mostly yeah. black. So like he really stands out yeah. contrast wise. Cause in the second part of the scene, there's not a lot of darker. There's no night stuff yeah. to my knowledge. Everything's in the daylight. Their yeah. house is white. They have a bunch of open windows. A lot of daylight pours in. And so you see him wearing like a black suit or something. Yeah. And he's got, he stands out. He really stands out. And in, in, and we rarely see distant wide shots of him. Like I think the widest shot, we still cut him off at like the knees yeah. or something. We're always like, looking up at him. Yeah, we are. We are. I would really want to like look through this frame by yeah. frame and see how true that is. Yeah. Cause I think that is really accurate. Cause I, I just, this whole time I'm like, he is big. <laughs> like, this is a ta- this is a frightening guy. Yeah. Um, w- it's an interesting cause when we cut to, uh, Travolta, we cut to him first, not the house first. Yeah. Right. We cut just to the kids run into the room and wake him and Robin right up. And then we see the house. It's a nice house. Three little girls family. Yeah. One of them's, uh, Eddie's gr- One daughter. One of them is Eddie's daughter. Two of them are John's. Yeah. And so... uh, Oh, his character's Joey. Joey (laughs) Giamatti. Joey Giamatti, you know? Joey Giamatti. Yeah. Um, Um, It paints the uh, suburban family upscale lifestyle that they're living right now. And it paints it as exactly the same as where she was before. Like, she and her wife... She and her husband are fighting. Um, He can be emotionally distant with her. Um... There's still, but she's still chain smoking. The only difference is she has different hair. She's a, she has different hair and a bigger house. 
yeah. to do it all in. But it's the same situation, and now with three daughters as well. Because he's he doesn't play off as the role of like an upscale business type yeah. who would feel uncomfortable around this type of behavior. Yeah. He seems he just like responds with more aggression and aggression. Yeah. And it seems like a perfect fit yeah. for this movie. Yeah. Um, but I feel like in any, if you were writing like a realistically speaking, this guy would be out of his depth if he had to go to yeah. the motel that Eddie was in, Yeah, you know, but he just strolls in like it's, I mean, he makes a comment like who could fucking live yeah. here, but like he, he has no, um, hesitations of yeah. bringing three little girls to a like impoverished, dingy. dingy motel. He's just like, I'm too hot shot. They can't, they can't like, I'm be- I'm better than all this. Right. Than it. And it's like, I feel like if you're writing realistically, you'd write like the fish out of water like character i don't know i feel like a guy like this who's playing like you know your football dad or whatever business type he just kind of has like such an air of arrogance to him that yeah. like even if he is out of his depths he just doesn't show it like he walks into these rooms and i was like i've been in this shit before i own this yeah i own this i own mine. this situation yeah which um, he does very very well yeah, troll to all three performances in this very good yes travolta uh, holds up with all three of them yes. before we get into the plot of this did you want to talk about the hair yes all right cue the hair ranking <laughs> all right welcome to the hair ranking report uh this goes with the average dung pile <laughs> the dung bi- average dung pile yeah it is nothing <laughs> can i pull can you pull let I me mean, just look at an image of the poster again to see yeah. what his hair looks like because it it really is just the same right it's the same hair he has in this period yeah um yeah nothing really going on with this unfortunately like i don't really see okay what's the list it's gonna be quick don't really have much to add <laughs> oh here's the list it's just the regular list it's gonna go in like the look who's talking range um below basements above urban cowboy Ooh. at least basements had some slight floof to it urban cowboy he had a cowboy hat on the whole time yeah exactly so yep that's where it goes cool it's just kind of normal that's the hair ranking there we go all right so um so yeah they're uh the relationship is not great no and he's especially perturbed um because eddie's getting out today. and they all know it too they all know it because she made sure he was aware this is the day that eddie gets out and this is i wrote this later but it's almost like right at this moment yeah marine has her mind made up yeah she says i'm not gonna see him oh the opposite well, originally she's like, I'm not going to see him. I'm not going to call him. And it's Travolta provoking her that has her change her mind. But it's quickly. It's very quick. Yeah. She does not take much to convince her. Like, if we reach the halfway point, 45 minute mark, it's yeah. like the 55 minute yeah. hour mark. She's decided, I'm going to leave this family and be with Eddie. Because that's what Travolta thinks she's going to do. And so he's just like, you know, if I got to go fucking see this guy and sort it out. And she's like, I'm not going to see him. I'm not going to call him. And he's like, where the fuck is he? Where the fuck is he? And he like pulls Eddie into the situations. Like it's Travolta. It's Travolta's insecurity. Yes. um, In his like masculinity, which is a very big thing. We've not talked about as much, but is a very prevalent theme in Travolta's movies is he plays embodiments of masculinity a lot. And this is a very poignant point of that like i can imagine tony monero making these same mistakes yes if like, he was married to the fuck was her name and like if he had just left well enough alone jackie uh, jackie yes jackie and uh staying alive and staying alive if he was married to jackie and she had a husband who she divorced but was committed to 10 years 10 years later from 19 19- 83 so 1993 Mm -hmm. just four years before this tony monero has been married to jackie for a while yeah replay this scene i can see him doing similar things that joey giamatti is doing the masculinity if he just left well enough alone 
We've been like, hey, if you want to talk about this at all, we can. It probably would have been fine. <laughs> like, but he invites the situation yes. to erupt. And because escalate. he's like, I need to prove I'm the better guy. And I need to take my daughters to yes. see him. Or he, at least the he only genie. Takes genie, genie. Yeah. Um, who is Eddie's daughter. And it's almost, at first I thought it was like, it was going to be a point to show Genie, look at your father. Like, yeah. if this is the guy, if you want to go live with him, this is who yeah. you'd be living with. I think that's what it starts as. And then it changes. Well, first Eddie gets out and he has long hair. Yeah. And so the first place he goes is a, uh, a salon. And a very trendy salon. It, that well, we got to talk about the scene though, where we first see Eddie after oh, yes. the time with, with uh, his psychiatrist, uh, Miss Green. Miss Green, I love that little dialogue bit where he's like, "Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Miss Green." It's like you Miss Green or you're Miss Green. Yeah. It's like no, I'm Miss Jane Green. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, okay, I just oh, make okay. Sure. yeah, I just want to make sure." And so, um, but that was a very sad dialogue. Yeah, because she he's like he's convinced it's only been three months he's convinced it's only been three months it's been 10 years yeah and she jane green is fully aware that not only has marine divorced him but she's remarried yeah. she and this kids. is the first time in 10 years she's been made aware of this because she's like we need to ask him questions to make sure he won't be violent when we get out exactly and how do you feel about your wife how would you feel if she divorced you and all of these questions are it just makes you sad yeah and he's like sean penn very strong performance here where he's just He's trying to keep his composure because he, he wants, wants to, to get, get out. out. Yeah. Um, but he's like l- absolutely losing it inside. Yeah. Yeah. He's it's, crying. It's very sad. Yeah. Very sad. But he does get out. He does pass the test. Yeah. Un- remarkably. Like that's what I wrote because I think uh, Harry Dean Stanton says mm-hmm. it, which is like, why do they let you yeah. out? And I kind of write that down yeah. too. I'm like, why did they let yeah. this? Because like he, he demonstrates mm-hmm. later in pe- bits and pieces as he's out, like the whole breaking yeah. the, the the wine bottle and drinking yeah. it, like just bits and pieces like that. And then the okay. hair salon, yeah. there's like these moments where I'm like, this motherfucker's still crazy as hell. It feels like he was like, not like the, it's an institution where it just, they just lock him up and it didn't help him. It only just like demoralized him. Yeah. Right. And the only thing he had was, um, the thought of, marine to get back to. there was no sense of help that really yeah. came and it was more so he just needs to get back to marine yeah. that put him in the headspace of i need to get yeah. out of here so he goes to the salon that's a very trendy salon it's a weird ass scene. yes um and he asked for a haircut and he's like my wife was blonde i like that we we're like there's a qu- there's a cut uh he now has like long shoulder length blonde hair um <laughs> like it's like can i it's like he-man hair can i can i do one thing to fix it he, he's like, sure, or what? It's like, I'm going to take the scissors. And immediately, you know, the hair salon's his hair yeah. is like, what the fuck? The hairstyle is so pissed. And he cuts off he's like, like, you ruined it. Like, two large strands of hair off yeah. like the sides of his bangs. Yeah. And, but later in the movie, it's like stylized. Yeah. Uh, Harry Dean Sand's wife cuts it for him. Oh, I missed that part. Yeah. She's like, thank she's, she's like, I cut your hair now. Y'all good. Yeah. She did a much better job. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, he gets a haircut, and throughout these bits and pieces with Eddie, it's intercutting more with Travolta and yeah. Marine, um, jo- Joey and Marine fighting, and uh, Joey's uh, insecurity and masculinity just like yeah. escalating it overtly that he doesn't need to. And Joey's eventually just like, "Where's he staying?" Yeah, and uh, and she tells him. She tells him. He grabs Jeannie and drives there to the yeah. Ford's hotel. Uh, Eddie's made aware that he's coming. Marine and him talk on the phone very briefly. Yeah. Um, and so he's like, I'm going to meet my daughter. Eddie Maureen tries to prepare him for how old she's going to be, but he doesn't fully get it until he sees her. But he starts trying to make toys for her because he wants her to like, like her dad. Yeah. And I thought that was a really like touching, sad moment where he's like trying to make toys for her. Yeah. Because he's like, ah, oh, this is like, he's cutting up like a newspaper into the like hand holding things yeah i don't know what they're called like but like the arms I, yeah um yeah i don't know what they're called either um but it's just it's tremendously sad when he gets here and he opens the door and he sees her in travolta who's like ready to fucking fight him <laughs> well and he's um, like you know how old she is it's like she's 
Yeah, like, you've been locked yeah. up for 10 years. Like, he's so blunt with him yeah. about the whole situation. Travolta's just trying to put Eddie down because he doesn't want him to be a threat. He's trying to just prove he's the bigger man. Yeah. And he's saying, like, she's nine years old. Like, I picked up Marine from the gutter. I got yeah. her off of drugs. We quit cigarettes together. Yeah, he he says that smoking. as he's smoking a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> it's, another it's like, we, we quit, and then we restarted together. Um, and then... Um, he's like Travolta just is incapable of like letting it die. <laughs> he's he's just like, all right, what if you come to the house and we settle this all together? <laughs> to yeah. the dinner. <laughs> and that's when I wrote down, I'm so confused at Travolta's angle. <laughs> yeah. His, his angle is I need to show him the bigger man, the better man. I need to show it in person in front of Marine. He's he's digging his own grave. Yeah, he really is. But it's just like that toxic masculinity he just keeps building it. Um, and so Travolta just storms out with Je- Genie. Genie yeah. Genie's like seeing like, okay, maybe my dad's like not on the level. Entirely. This is one of my biggest issues with the movie yeah. is that you can't tell me that it, Genie's a little too mature for her age, a little too mature for her age. Yes. But also that John, like Joey was never like the Christ Saint like dad. Yeah. Like, it didn't take for him to get news that Marines, because he knew about Marines' ex husband yeah. Eddie for since they met. Yeah. And, but you can't tell me it it took this day that he knew he was coming out for him to all of a sudden yeah. become a jerk and an asshole. Yeah. And he's always been that way. And so, my whole issue is like, you know, there would be a different atmosphere of a family dynamic present mm. in the house than what we yeah. see. Because in this, in this, it's almost like, he doesn't become a jerk until yeah. today. The f- that that's also my problem. My one problem with this movie, or not my one, but the base is that. Whereas we get a lot of build up with Penn and Wright, we don't get a lot of build up with Travolta and Wright. They're just fighting immediately. Immediately, we yes. don't get to see what this relationship was like. We don't really get to. Yes, exactly. We don't get to see that deconstruct. We see it already sort of deconstruct, yeah, falling apart. Falling apart. And also with the kids, like yeah. the kids sort of treat him like he's their dad like yeah. they're uh, like he's a good dad and all yeah. that stuff like the way they treat him and it's like you know genie makes comments like dad like why are you doing this it's like he probably did this like all your life yeah so like why are you making these like statements of like oh dad you yeah. don't usually act like don't tell me that he's yeah. probably always acted like this that that's an issue i had with this where it was very unbelievable in the sense that oh you mean he was like a cute cuddly soft dad yeah. until this point no like the kids would be different they mm-hmm. would be different because they grew up with this guy as their yeah. dad. So, yeah. Um, there was one bit. No, so, like, when he's about to walk out of the motel, yeah. and he's, like, he either walks in the motel or he fights him. Yeah. It's, like, one or the other. There's no more yeah. civil talking. And it, it, he says something like, if I come over, I'm walking out with Marine. Yeah. <laughs> and Travol- I was like, you, you what? <laughs> And then he just leaves, yeah. which I thought he'd probably fucking yeah. kill him right then. But And then Eddie's like, I, I got to shape up for this. And so he goes to back to Harry Dean Stanton yeah. um, and his wife. A montage to everybody's working for the weekend plays uh, as they freshen him up. Yeah. Um, you know, they they do like a montage rent. No, I'm kidding. That doesn't actually happen. Everybody's working for the... Fair use copyright. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they uh, so he comes over. And, yes. Oh, and John Travolta says, I, "We forgot bring this. a friend. Bring a friend." <laughs> and so Eddie drags poor Harry Dean Stanton into this, which is another bit that we're going to get into at the very end. But it's another example of John Travolta digging his own fucking yes. grave in this movie. That he's like, "Not only do I want you to come, I want you to come with reinforcements." <laughs> <laughs> so we get to the end of the film. It's like you did this. <laughs> yes. Um, he gets when his, will you learn when will that you your actions have consequences? <laughs> oh man! But um, he, he, but like we say all these things about Joey making these dumb decisions. The performance that John Travolta is really makes selling these performances is selling it. it yeah. He really sells that this character would, would make these would perform. make these decisions. Yes. you know. So like props to Travolta yes. again with Broken Arrow. You yeah. know, like anybody else who could have taken like a. Uh, a very thin role and just played it very straight yes. whereas you would put john travolta's role he's bringing like, a lot to it yes and like any other guy who would play this movie with no other added flair it'd be like this guy's an idiot yeah. like what's he doing <laughs> but it's because it's john travolta playing it a certain way where it's like 
this guy's an idiot, but yeah, I but see. But you understand why he's doing this thing. Yes. Like you understand where his mindset is. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's the dinner party yeah, scene. This movie moves very fast. We're very near the end. Right now right? we're at the three, we're three quarters yeah. of the way through the yeah. film. So um, he and Harry, Eddie and Harry Dean Stanton show up. Yeah. Harry Dean Stanton's playing a guy named Shorty. <laughs> uh, which That's is funny. And he's not short. Yeah, he's, he's tall. He's a tall guy. <laughs> um, so he, he has Harry Dean Stanton. He's got um, his wife. and The wife stays in the car. Yes. Harry Dean Stanton and Eddie go inside. They go inside. And his hair is like stylized yes. blonde. Like it looks pretty good. Immediately tensions are high. Marina's upstairs. Y- yeah. she She's upstairs in her bed and Travolta, uh, Joey's just like, hey. Sizing him up. You've got to come down. And so um, uh, Travolta comes down alone. Jeannie's there, I think. Yes. Um, it's him, the girls, um, Eddie, and Harry Dean Stanton. And, like, things are laid out pretty quickly as to what the situation. Harry Dean Stanton's just, like, is sitting there drinking at the yeah. bar. And, like, the, the bit where like Travolta fly. talks to Maureen in her bed before he goes down to see Eddie and uh, Shorty is... Yeah. That's when I wrote down, like, Maureen has a has made up her mind yeah. about what she's going to do. Yeah. How she's going to leave the family and go with Eddie. She's like, at the very least, Eddie is honest about, like, what he is. You pretend that you're something you're not. Right. And so, but, again, this is three quarters of the way through the movie, and I'm thinking, like, is something going to change? Yeah. Is she going to have, like, a revelation? Like, you know what? I can't give up this high life, high class life. No. She makes it. She made up her decision. She made up her decision. A like, lot of conflict happens. And she goes through with her decision. Yes. Well, after Eddie and Joey have, like, arguments, he goes upstairs to find Maureen and just tell her what's what. All at the same time, Joey gives Jeannie a beer. Yes, he gives the little girl a beer. He's like, fucking drink it. Yeah, because she's like, can I have a beer? Harry Dean Stanton just, like, has his head in his hands in the corner, sipping his, like, martini or whatever it is. And that's what I wrote, like, the fuck is going on? And And that's when I start writing down the sequence of events. The daughter is drinking beer. Joey pulls out a gun. Yes. Marine tried to kill herself. Yes, she slits her wrist and Eddie pulls her out and is able to like bandage it up pretty quick. Then they start making Eddie and Marine start making out on the floor of the bathroom yes. right after she's tried to kill herself. Yes. Jeannie comes upstairs. Eddie tells her, I can't be your dad. Joey's the dad for you. And I can't be your best friend. I can be your second best friend. Um, to his daughter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> um, Can't give this girl anything. Maureen heads downstairs with Eddie, and she's like, I'm leaving. And Joey, like, in a moment, accepts it. He's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. He's like, he's like, the girl stay with me, though. Yeah, he does kind of accept it. Yeah, he's it. like, the girl stay with me. And she's like, that's, that's good. You're, you are a good father to them. Yeah, like, he's somewhat, he's almost, like, quietly yeah. calming so, down. He's sort of like, it's weird. Yeah. Like, and you so, felt it, too, right? It's yeah. like, well, this is, like, he's just kind of... so, Eddie, Harry, Dean, Stan, and Robin Wright go outside. They get in the car. John Wall comes up with a gun. With a gun! <laughs> <laughs> and he fires it! I'm like, oh, of course! <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, Makes sense. He comes out. He's ready to go. Um, they subdue him to get the gun out of his hand. Yeah, well, that's the, that's what my point with him yeah. dipping his own grave. That not yeah. only did he invite Eddie to come over... He, he met an Eddie come over with reinforcements. So, of course, he fires off a gun. Fucking Robin Wright, uh, Harry Dean Stanton, Eddie, uh, Eddie's, um, no, Shorty's Eddie, wife. Shorty's wife. <laughs> all and Jeannie, the all kid, come. all attack this. It's <laughs> such a <laughs> messy fight. John Travolta's on the lawn of his, like, you know, upscale suburban yeah. house. And this is the moment where I was like, where it's like, this is insane, but I know things like this happen. Like, people like this exist. Yeah. And, like, even if it's so far out of my, like, di- diaspora or whatever, like, it's, like, sad and kind of just interesting to, to show this in a movie. Yeah. And then after that happens, John Travolta gets back up and he's with his three girls. Yeah. They all get back in the car. Like, Robin Wright. Yeah. Harry Dean Stanton and Eddie. Um, they drive off. And they drive off. John Travolta goes back inside with the girls. In the movie. And, well, first there's a little conversation, and then Shorty, like his wife's like, turn the music on. He's like, uh, just shut up. I don't want to talk with you. And then Robin Wright's like, can we just be quiet? Yeah. I think she kisses Eddie, and they drive off. We get this exact same helicopter shot that opened the movie, and then it cuts to black, and directed by Nick Cassavetes. And that's when I write down, what the hell did I just watch? <laughs> 
Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, a bunch of... I mean, it's definitely a... Uh, it's a demonstrated observation. Yes. That's what this movie is. It's nothing more. Yeah. And you can appreciate the observation for what it is. Mm-hmm. Or you can take it as a concoction of chaotic nothingness. Yeah. And move on. Yeah. Um, but that is what it is for me. And in terms of my perceptions of whether I liked it or not, I will say that I I read and observed all of the intentional emotional beats you're supposed to get from the specific scenes, yeah. like the sadness of Eddie's character and the chaotic nature of Robin Wright's character and the immediate like toxic masculine nature yeah. of Travolta's character. Like I got all of that. Yeah. Um, and I and I. Uh, respect for you know the craft involved in yeah all that stuff not just the writing but those care the the actors taking mm-hmm. on those roles very very well you know i don't there's not a squeaky wheel in this cast i don't i don't yeah think, i don't think I so agree. so yeah i would say for me ultimately you know six out of ten seven out of ten for me like i really respect that this movie's trying to i i don't want to say i enjoyed the experience of watching it yeah um but i liked the movie mm-hmm. i think it there's i think it leaves some things unsaid that should have been said mm-hmm. like i appreciate a movie that leaves things unsaid but there's some things unsaid that i think just could have been elaborated on we could have had a little more of yeah uh just in getting more of these characters i mean like they don't linger on the fact that marine is leaving her kids yes with probably an abusive father yes not much about that i think that's very much part of the intent Mm-hmm. Is that like, it's just very, this is just how it happens. Like it's whenever this does really happen, it's a casual thing. Yeah. And what's interesting is like, right as she's about to leave, like she says something like, be good know. for your father or something. Like well, that. and he says like, you know, Art, do you think you might come back? He says, I don't know. Yeah. Which she's is She's just a person worse. who's very confused. Which is worse. Because to me, it's like, I'd either want to know if you're coming back or not. Don't give me a small hope. That yeah. you may or may not be, and yeah. then I'm just waiting on you. Yeah. Because then, what do I tell our kids? Is mom gone or is mom not gone? Yeah. And I, again, it goes back to show who they are as people. Mm-hmm. Which is not very good. Yeah. Not very good people. So again, a um, a demonstrated observation. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah, it's uh, just a slice of scumbum life, if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And that's that's basically the movie. Yeah. What uh Yeah, um, I enjoyed I liked it. Um I think had John Cassavetes been able to direct before his passing, it would have been something would have been in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> um in Nick's hands, like it well enough, he would go on to make the notebook, which is very strange. Um it def this definitely got the nineties treatment. Yeah. Some goofy, fun music over non-goofy, not fun Yeah, scenes. there's some very weird music choices in this. Yeah. Um, that seems very characteristic of the 90s, wouldn't you say? From the movies we've covered yes. so far, there's been a lot of those, like, this does not... Yeah, the soundtrack that doesn't quite this, fit with this the thing. does not match the tone of yeah. what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> uh, Have you ever seen As Good As It Gets? No. I mean, not As Good As It Gets, um, Rules of en- Endearment? Is that it? Rules of Endearment? Terms of Endearment. Terms of Endearment. Oh, uh, maybe. Uh, James L. Brooks movie. Um, it has like a very like Hallmark movie soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found it very distracting when I watched the movie. <laughs> but there's a part in it <laughs> where uh, it's uh, Shirley MacLaine and Jack Nicholson, uh, my roommate, are riding in a car together. Yeah. Uh, they're just driving along the beach, and it's like this Hallmark music's playing, and she like skids to a stop, and Jack Nicholson goes flying out of the car and like goes like thirty feet and skids into the ocean from like the sand. It's very funny, um, but the music is so strange for it. Yeah, uh, it's whenever I find mismatched music, I think about that specific moment a lot. Oh, I th- you know what moment I think about when it comes to mismatched music? What? Oh, come on. I, I know it's something we talked about. Urban uh, Cowboy. Oh, Urban Cowboy. When uh, John Travolta literally tries to kidnap uh, his wife, and it's like Deborah do, do, Winger, do, 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 do. and it's like <laughs> put any different music over that scene. Very different vibe. Yes, very different vibe. Um, 
but we just yeah. crossed the hour mark, Jeff. Did we? Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, yes, yeah, she's so lovely. It comes out. Um, it's eighteen million dollar budget. It only makes seven million, so it's not a San Angel as we talked about. It's a it's a flop flop. It gets good reviews. Uh, nothing I would say like necessarily. No, not like Academy level. But I um doesn't Sean Penn win the Can Award for um Best Actor? Here's a. I'm not gonna play the music, but here's what I was talking. About. Wait, are you showing me the scene? I am. I think it's very funny. Okay. Well, <laughs> there's Jeff, Jack. Jeff is showing me a scene from Terms of Endearment that I'm watching right now. So. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Don't know why I needed that, but I got it. It's just like a. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but this movie would not get be nominated for any Oscars. Um, oh, really, yeah, it was an August release. It was fairly dumped in a sense. I think, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, so, the Cannes Film Festival 97, Sean Penn won Best Actor. Um, Roger Ebert gave it three out of uh, four stars. Roger Ebert gives a lot of things three out of four <laughs> stars, <laughs> as we talked about last week. Uh, um, the Screen Actors Guild Award, um, Robin Wright got nominated. Well deserved. Yeah, I'd say all these, all those are well deserved. Yeah, I, I. Is there any Academy thing worthy? I don't really. I mean, what else came in ninety out in ninety seven? Uh, nineteen. Okay, so it came out in nineteen ninety seven. So that'd be the nineteen ninety eight Oscars. Let's see what was nominated for Best Picture that year. It was Titanic, as good as it gets, The Full Monty, Good as Well Hunting, and L.A. Confidential. So, so a big year. A big year for movies. So this one slid under the radar, yes. critically award speaking. Because, you know, there's always a thing where if it wins a lot of awards, it adds a little uptick with yeah. its finan- finances. But The acting winners this year were Jack Nicholson for As Good As It Gets, Helen Hunt for As Good As It Gets, Robin Williams for Good Will Hunting, and Kim Bassinger for L.A. Confidential. Yeah, there's no way. Some great so, movies I mean, listed th- there. This and then is- Titanic. One best picture, you know, obviously. This is critically all right, but not critically good enough to like compete with any of those top dogs. Yeah. Yeah. So it's slid under the radar mm-hmm. a little bit. But you know, for Travolta, it's just another notch on his belt, even if it's not a financial hit, it's just him giving another good performance. Yeah. In a well received movie. If I was like a if if I was gonna put this on like my his actor reel for anything, like definitely like the big bad villain role. Yeah. Like he could I mean just the nature of how it was shot too. Like I really what you said earlier kind of shocked me because I never really noticed that. I, I really can't think of a time we're ever looking down on Travolta. He is so big. He's like he's a big. big guy in general. Like he's very tall. Yeah, he's six foot. He's tall and stocky. Five. Right? Um, let's look up. He's pretty tall. He's above six foot. Travolta height. He is six foot two. Okay. Still above six feet. Yeah. Um, but stocky too. Yeah. Like he's not thin staying alive he's stocky you mm. know. Yeah. yeah stocky guy in this just looks huge <laughs> like in a good way um but yeah i think um that's basically the extent of uh this movie and his performance in it what's what's coming up next week what are we doing next week next week we are covering yeah, i guess i'll just launch into the ending bit i just uh, want to know like context wise for what we're getting ourselves into i um, mean next week he's moving on from this and he's taken his face off oh really yeah i totally forgot that's what we're doing next after week this. he's taking his face off it's you know great movie for this to be a predecessor to yes because talk about like the villain role like he's stocky he and take face his face off i'm looking for a truffle pick i'm looking for a truffle pick <laughs> that movie's apparently really good i've heard it's getting like rave reviews as a deeply emotional and affecting like movie and the trailer made a bunch of people laugh my, at the lord pig. of the rings screening yes Stuart and i saw lord of the rings in theaters and they played the pig trailer and everyone thought it was very funny because the opening thing is, is i'm Nick looking Cade. for a truffle pig <laughs> <laughs> you said where's it's... my pig <laughs> The trailer sells it as John Wick, but with a pig. Yeah. The movie is, to my understanding, not John Wick with a pig. Because it's more about like the culinary aspect of it, right? Yeah, it's a like culinary aspect, like just like he's um, a the emotional lo- the emotional level of loss. Yeah. But the trailer's like, I'm looking for a truffle pig. <laughs> <laughs> How are uh, you doing that so effectively? 
I'm looking for. I, I just. I, I can do a pretty good Nick. It's a really. It's a. Yeah. Just from the. I've listened to the trailer many times yes. <laughs> because of how funny it is. Yes. You're doing it really well. I'd like to take his face off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. So we have face off after this. Yes. Next week is. For the listener, 98 or same year, 97? I believe Face Off is 98. 98. Um, I don't have that in front of me. But next few weeks, uh, you folks have this much, this looking forward to. Next week, we have Face Off with returning guest, Matt Abaldi. Oh, yes. Um, the week after that, you have Mad City. The week after that, Primary Colors. Uh, what is our friend Bill Clinton's coming? Um, week after that, Welcome to Hollywood. We're going to be welcomed. <laughs> we are going to be welcomed. And then the week after that's the Thin Red Line. Which is quite a jump from some of these movies. And all of these uh, movies are, for the most part, hits. Yes. Every single one of them. Mad Besides S- Welcome to Hollywood, which, again, yeah, it does not we're, exist. We're, we're, we don't really count that. Yeah. Uh, Mad City, um, I, to my understanding, wasn't a huge hit, but it's a movie. I mean, it's, or, got, it's got Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. It's, um, not that that makes it a great film, but, you know. I think I, I, think I made a tidy little profit. Oh, wait, no, it was a huge flop. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I about well, I mean, we'll talk about Mad City oh, when we get yeah, to Oh, yeah, I'm looking at it now. Comical flop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. This did yeah. not do well. This oh, not... shit. All right, I take everything I said uh, back. I take, I take it all back. God damn. <laughs> all right, so we're getting... We're going to... We have a lot of hits coming up. Some uh, lukewarm some stuff. Some lukewarm, and then and maybe some, one or two massive misses. Yeah, one, but... one or two mi- misses. Yeah. Still, we're kind of on the... Yeah. Rickety rockety wave of his. I mean, we're, we're still in the A list era. Like, he's an A list star at this point. It's a rickety rockety A list yes. era. You know, like when we said this earlier, like, you know. He's, he's swinging I, a lot. He's, I told you that I had I had some um, uh, uh, concerns. Well, not concerns, just like Trepidation. trepidations about calling this the A-list era because well, you're right like this is a the pulp fiction was the reignition of his career but like mm-hmm. and he does yeah. become a well, name and a face again but it's, it's like it it's is not a, necessarily it's a bit rickety rockety it's not you necessarily know? the A-list like, era in the sense that it's all A-list movies but he is an A-list star at this point yes like he can sell a movie yes he doesn't lose that ability until much later because, like, he he, yes. he has some big flops, but he's still, like, it's John Travolta. He sells the movies. He doesn't start doing direct-to-video uh, action movies until the 2010s. Hmm. Yeah. Which we will talk about in um, an episode that, an era that starts uh, February 8th of next year, folks. Fuck. Look forward to it. My God. Taking of Pelham one two three February eighth twenty twenty two. Can I just talk about how excited I am for the Wild Hogs episode? Wild Hogs. <laughs> I'm so oh, Walt Becker film. I'm so excited to talk about that movie. It's gonna be a good time. Yeah. We have some. Uh, I won't spoil anything, but we have a lot of fun guests coming up for you folks. Yeah. Uh, we hope you continue to enjoy, and at the same time, we hope you continue to like, rate, review, and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. As a reminder, we are available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podcasts, Google Google Podcasts, Podcasts, and and YouTube. YouTube. Find us at Travolting Pod Pod on Twitter or Instagram Instagram. for updates and fun Fun stuff. stuff. You can pop into our Reddit, r slash Travolting. Email any comments or questions to TravoltingPodcast at gmail.com. Find me on Twitter at Jeff W. Sweetie. Find, find Stu on Instagram, Instagram at Stuart Elmer 95. Special thanks to Rebecca <laughs> Johnson for our graphic design and Michael Van Bodegum, Bodegum Smith, Smith for our theme, theme music. music. Have a great, great week, folks. Kurt.